I'm Chiquita Banana and I've come to say This is not a banana. This fruit is bigger, tougher, and has a much thicker skin than your average banana. This is a plantain, a humble fruit that has transcended beyond being a simple eligible community to becoming a major symbol of cultural heritage and identity across South America, the Caribbean, and Africa. It has become such a cultural pride for locals that debating its origin is a subject of very intense debate. Some claim it was born in South America. Africa, Africa, Africa. How did the plantains come from that continent to the Hispaniola Islands? The researcher believe it emerged somewhere in the shores of Asia. As for myself, I always thought that it came from Cameroon. So I didn't expect that this origin story would challenge my understanding of my own cultural heritage. Through months of extensive research and digging into archives, I've uncovered the methods and techniques that researchers have used to trace the plantain's root back to its ancient origins, through thousands of years and numerous civilizations. So stick around until the end of the video to find out how it ended up in Africa, South America, Europe, and the Caribbean. So what are these, plums? What is that? Plantains. Plantains? Yes. Each banana plant. That was a plantain. There's only one single stem of banana. Let's take a look and see where bananas first came from. As a Cameroonian, I grew up with this. I always thought that the origin of this plant came from Cameroon. But most countries in the southern hemisphere that share the same climate where the plant grows also tend to think that it originated from the countries. The first domestication of bananas was traced by archaeologists as far as 8000 BCE in the Kirk Valley of New Guinea. Archaeological evidence suggests that the people of the Kirk Valley began cultivating crops such as taro, yams, and bananas as early as 9000 years ago, making this region one of the oldest centers of plant domestication in the world and home to the earliest site of agricultural development in the world. And although it is the first known instance of banana domestication, it's unlikely that it's the birthplace of all domesticated species. By using techniques of cooling and planting, humans have fused, refined, and manipulated the different domesticated varieties of the plant. So how did we go from banana to plantain? And what are plantains? Here is a plantain, and next to it is a banana. They look so much alike because they are actually from the same family of plants. It's something that we can estimate scientifically. Just as researchers were able to formulate the theory about the evolution of our species, it's called phylogenetic. And that same approach can be applied to plants. Phylogenetic is like a big family tree for all living things on Earth, from tiny microbes to big animals like elephants. Just like how you have a family tree with your mom, dad, grandparent, and other relatives, scientists use phylogenetic to see how different species have evolved over time. It's a bit like putting together a big puzzle, but instead of a puzzle pieces, they use clues from the animal's DNA and other characteristics to figure out how they are related. This helps us understand how species have changed and adapt over many, many years. These trees can help us make hypotheses about the evolutionary relationship among a group of organisms. Through this analysis, it was discovered that plantains are closely related to the Musa plant, a species in a banana family coined by this guy. This means that plantains are actually a type of banana and they evolved from the same ancestral species as other bananas. What the hell is a plantain? Well, it's part of the banana family. It's a delicacy. You're not getting any plantain. <laughs> These type of plants are called musicia, and they share the same biological classification ranking, Musa. The Musae family represent the tree where both bananas and plantains come from. The two main species that gave rise to modern bananas are Musa acuminata and Musa barbiciana. This is Luigi Alois Ciuscola, an Italian botanist who was the first person in 1820 to describe these two types of variety of plants that are the basis for almost all cultivated bananas and plantains today. They are the true ancestor of both bananas and plantain as we know it today. It's important to note that not all plants in this family are domesticated. So what exactly is a domesticated plant? A domesticated plant is a plant that has been changed by humans to have specific traits like big fruit or colorful flowers. These changes have made the plant so different from its wild ancestor that it can't reproduce on its own anymore. That means it needs help from people, 
like being planted or harvested to continue to grow and produce fruits. So a domesticated plant is one that has been altered so much that it can't survive without human intervention. This is technically selective breeding, and most of the species of plantain we know around the world have evolved through selective breeding. And when a plant has been produced in cultivation by selective breeding, we call it a cultivar. And for the case of plantains, a number of cultivars are related to each type of bunch. As you can see, there are a lot of different cultivars of varieties of plantain created through selective breeding. So since this plant has so many cultivars, it may seem complicated to determine the true origin of plantain, but archaeologists and scientists have a method to find the origin of a plant. Using the phylogenetic evidence and historical account, we know that plantain are believed to have primarily grown in Malaysia, since there are many varieties of the oldest ancestral plant found there. But how did plantain spread to the rest of Southeast Asian countries and then ended up all over the world? New Guinea is one of the places the plantain is believed to have spread to first, and it's not clear how it got there, but scientists believe it would have more likely been to migration or people sharing resources. The reason archaeologists are focused on the Kirk Valley of New Guinea is because the people of the Kirk Valley were among the first to domesticate the banana plant and they developed new varieties of the fruit that were better suited for their local growing condition. The banana, and by extension the plantain, was a significant crop for the people of the Kirk Valley as it provided a reliable source of food that could be stored and transported easily. The earliest domestication of plantains and bananas was from naturally occurring development of the fruit without fertilization, which brought us Musa Banksy in New Guinea. Humans gathering food in this area began domesticating the plant a long time ago, in the late Pleistocene period. It was the last ice age. It is believed that humans were able to live and survive the Pleistocene thanks to language, art, and storytelling through proximity. Proximity meaning people living close to each other and therefore able to share ideas while migrating. The human of the time tasted bananas and plantains and told each other, hey man, you gotta try this. This is how cultivated bananas and plantains are likely to have been brought closer to the island of Southeast Asia from New Guinea. It is believed that the plantain was first introduced to India by the Dravidian who migrated to the Indian subcontinent from Southeast Asia around 5,000 years ago. Arab traders also brought the plant with them around 327 BC, since the Arabian Peninsula was an important center of trade and commerce in the ancient world. The year 327 BC is associated with the campaign of Alexander the Great, who invaded India and fought a series of battles against the Indian king Porus. Alexander's campaign marked the first known contact between the Greeks and the Indian. This is around this time that the European troops first saw a banana. During that time, he also saw plantains. At the time, people believed that it was a magical plant from the East that could cure headaches. After training them for the first time, he introduced his new discovery to Europe. But how did it arrive in Africa and the Caribbean? There are three competing theories on how the plant may have been introduced to Africa. One, it is possible that they were introduced by the Portuguese during the 16th century. The Portuguese were a major colonial power in the 16th century and had a significant presence in Africa, particularly around the western coast. It's possible that they may have introduced the plantain to Africa during the colonial activities, either as a food crop for their own consumption or as a mean of trading with the local population. The Portuguese were known to have introduced a variety of new crops to their colonies, including cassava, maize, and beans. It is possible that plantain were also among these crops. Two, it is possible that plantain were introduced to Africa by Arab or Persian traders who were involved in extensive trade network that spanned the Indian Ocean and the Mediterranean Sea. There are historical records, like an Arabic medical text called the Canon of Medicine by the Persian physician Ibn Sina that suggests that the plantain was known in Egypt as early as the 10th century AD, which support the theory of Arab trader introducing the plant to Africa. Another historical record that suggests the presence of plantain in Africa is the account of the Moroccan explorer Ibn Battuta. In his travelogue, Ibn Battuta describes seeing plantain plantation in the region and notes that the fruit was an important food crop for the local population. 3. The Norman Simon Theory That's this guy. Simon was a highly respected figure in the world of horticulture. His theory is that he was brought to the continent by Austronesian-speaking people who settled in Madagascar early in the first millennium AD. 
And since Norman Simon was an authority on strawberry and banana, his theory has steadily been gaining ground. There's one thing that is undisputed, is that by the 1200, the banana reached North Africa and it spread across Africa in waves, with plantain coming first. And to spread across Africa, the plant had to cross a very dense rainforest, which was previously thought impossible. This is also why the question of how plantain arrived in Africa has been a topic of debate, with one argument being that we can't find the crop in the jungle. So this idea led many to assume that since there are plantains in the jungle, maybe it was already there in the first place. But there is actually a logical explanation about how the plantain ended up in the jungle in the first place. It arrived in the forest of Africa through the Bantu migration. The Bantu were a group of people who originated from the Cameroon and Nigeria region and migrated across much of Central, Eastern and Southern Africa. It was previously thought that it would have been very, very difficult for these agricultural people to cross the dense Central African rainforest, as it would have been hard to transport and maintain their crop and cattle. Recent research have shown that they actually migrated directly to the rainforest. The Bantu people brought with them their agriculture practices and crops, including plantains, and they cleared the forest to make space for their farm, which allowed the plantain to thrive in new environment, leading to its widespread distribution throughout the African continent. The plantain was well suited to the tropical climate and rich soil of the African forest, and it quickly became a staple food for the Bantu people and other local communities. Today, Plantain are an important part of the African diet, providing a source of carbohydrates, vitamins, and minerals. So diffusion brought plantain to the rainforest where they were propagated over many, many centuries. And this was the plantain wave. Forget the Silk Road. This journey was about crossing land, rainforest, and ocean. So now we know how it got to Africa, but what about the Caribbean? Three plantains ought to do it. All right, all right, just hold it right there. What? This food isn't for you. Plantain are thought to have been brought to the Caribbean in 1516 AD by a Portuguese Franciscan monk. The popular belief is that he found the plantains in the Canary Islands and brought them to Santo Domingo. But there is limited historical evidence to support it. The first written record of plantain in the Caribbean come from a Spanish with a really cool name in the chronicle of Gonzalez Fernandez de Oviedo y Valdez, who wrote in the early 16th century about the presence of the fruit in the region. However, Oviedo does not mention the rule of the Portuguese monk in the introduction of plantains to the Caribbean. There are also records that suggest that plantains were known in the Caribbean prior to the arrival of the Portuguese monk. Indigenous Caribbean population have been growing plantain and other crops for thousands of years prior to the arrival of European explorer. Additionally, there are records that suggest that African slaves who were brought to the Caribbean in the 16th century were already familiar with the cultivation and use of plantains. It is possible that the fruit was introduced to the region by indigenous people, European explorers, and settlers, or through trade with other parts of the world. It was until the early 1800s that the fruit made its way to the United States, thanks in part to the effort of Portuguese and Spanish slave traders by loading plantains and bananas with slaves on the long voyage to Brazil. The slave quickly adapted the plantain to their diet after he arrived in South America, where he quickly replaced staples like beans, yams, and corn, which by the way, also has a fascinating origin story. While there is still much we don't know about the exact details of plantain's journey through history, one thing is clear. This fruit has played a vital role in the development of human societies and the evolution of our diets. If you enjoy learning about the history of plantains, make sure to smash the like button to help YouTube recommend this video to more people like you. That really helps. Now, I'd like to invite you to join the conversation about plantains and their role in our life. Do you have a plantain story? I'd love to hear from you in the comments. And if you know someone who is still debating the true origin of plantains, please be sure to share this video with them. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.